Gents, I just want to pause the episode for a moment to let you know about the Strong Men of Value Academy. You will have heard me refer to it a number of times and I want to bring more attention to it. So this isn't just a program. It's a life-changing environment and community of men who are focused on personal and professional growth. We're looking at areas of relationships, wealth and health, things to help you thrive and maximize your life. Imagine having bi-monthly one-on-one coaching sessions with myself, weekly group coaching calls, and an incredible brotherhood of high achievers by your side. Now we're diving into resilience, leadership, and holistic growth to not just succeed in your career, but to thrive in your health and your relationships. Your journey to greatness, it starts here. So join the movement and you can apply for the Strong Men of Value Academy. You can head to the manthatcanproject.com to find out more. Like we just finished a, an obesity study because there are now the, the new the new line of designer drugs for obesity have unbelievable side effects and it's just coming out that it actually it actually reduces your muscles you lose weight but it attacks your muscles. The Man That Can Project podcast, a podcast empowering career driven men to live more fulfilling lives. We are here to challenge your beliefs, redefine success, and talk about the important stuff in a relatable way. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. My name's Lockie Stewart. Let's get into it. Mark Caboni, thanks for joining me on the show. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thanks for having me. Mate, so you're the CEO of PN Medical, which has the device or it's home to the device, the breather, which is the world's first and number one drug-free evidence-based combined respiratory muscle training device, which is used by people all around the world. And I'm excited to dive into it because I, when I first read James Nestor's book, Breathe, a number of years ago, I became obsessed, or not obsessed, but pretty obsessed with how I can breathe better because for much of my life, my uh, snorkel, my nose has never worked. I've had you know a number of surgeries, broken it a number of times, and I'm a massive mouth breather. So when I started learning how it can change the palate of your mouth and your, your teeth structure and obviously all the other hyperventilation, et cetera, from how I was breathing, I was like, I need to improve this, right? It's a skill set. So then when uh, I got to connect with you, I was like, this is perfect because I know I'm not alone in how poor my breathing is. And you're the guy to learn from. So really appreciate your time. Thank you. Where I'd love to dive in as well. You know, obviously you're a CEO, you're a family man, and you're extremely passionate about empowering people to improve their lives through the science of breath. Where did the, I guess, interest come from for you in the science of breathing? Yeah, great question. I think I was like most people. And it, and it does happen with um, breathing. You don't realize you have a problem almost until it's too late because it creeps up on you so slowly. Uh, but I, I did, I did fall into this um, about gosh, over 15 years ago when I met my wife. So her mom created this category 40, 40 plus years ago, Peggy Nicholson. She's the founder of the company. And uh, I, I was learning about it over the years. And then I decided, um, you know, over nine years ago to say, Hey, I'm going to leave the fortune 100 world. This is an amazing concept. I had no idea how many people around the world have trouble breathing. But then what I really learned too, is that over 90% of all humans have some form of dysfunctional breathing pattern. I mean, that's almost every single person on earth. (laughs) You know, you start out as the belly breather when you're up until about five years old, and then you start breathing higher and higher in your chest. And all that does is it, it eventually messes with your autonomic system and it, and it puts you in a sympathetic state and, you know, your body's always trying to get back to homeostasis. So for me, uh, also I suffer from insomnia. I just, I just, I'm always thinking, I just, just can't fall asleep. Um, snoring, insomnia, low energy, especially with COVID I've had COVID, I think four times, but I, I'm pretty sure it's four times now. So I've, I've suffered from long COVID, which, um, you know, it drains your energy you get brain fog. There's a lot of side effects. So this has become a passion for me because I'm really on this. I'm I'm passionate about, you know, trying to crack the code in on anxiety, sleeplessness, and um, low energy. And the company has made this possible for me because what I do is we do a lot of research, tons of research for a company 
we're not a we're not a billion dollar company. We're we're nowhere near there like big pharma. But we do a lot of studies. I'm trying to push the bar forward for the entire world right now. And what I get to do is I get to ask our chief scientist to tweak some of the studies so we can focus on sleep, low energy, and in in you know the things that personally affect me. But it's really cool that we do. You know, we've affected two million people so far. We've helped, so it's been it's been a very rewarding career. And uh, since I've been at the helm for nine years, so it's it's just been a blast. Because some of the results you guys have seen from the work that you're doing is like improved oxygen saturation, uh, peak uh, reduced hyperinflation, speech and swallow performance, which as someone who does a podcast and my wife's a musician when I was reading that, because I actually had vocal coaching last year for that um, to try and project my voice more without getting tired. So when I was reading that, I was like, all right, I'm going to get one for myself and Amy, but then also just for everyday life. Because I remember uh, when I first read um, James Ness's book, Breathe, that I did the test where you could work out where you're at in your breathing rate, whether you're hyperventilating on a daily basis or you've got a really good breath count. And I was hyperventilating, even though it Mm -hmm. feels normal for me. Mm -hmm. But my breath rate is like 16 to 17 breaths per minute, which obviously as, yeah, as you were saying, Mm. your, your body then is in that heightened state where it's, it's fight or flight, even though it's like, I feel like I'm going about my day every way. So then when I, then once again came across this, I was like, training your breathing is just like training a specific muscle group. It just made made absolute sense. Yeah, well, people don't realize it that, you know, we have around 77 muscles of respiration and almost 125 of posture. And what we do, our science, our technology, you just put the device in your mouth. It has different pressure settings on each side of the breath. And it actually targets. So what it is, it's all about targeting, right? So it targets those smooth muscles. It targets the diaphragm especially, but there are there are over 200 muscles that are affected in breath and posture. And you know what happens when posture goes off. I mean, everything breaks. So it's it goes one in the same that we can affect that many parts of the body because it's it's key. You know, you can you can go without water, you can go without food, but you sure can't go without breathing very long. <laughs> I know. Tried that. I, I did a survival like an apnea course, which was for big wave surfing and stuff like that. And uh, three, four years ago, and I managed to get up to just over four minutes with obviously the the techniques that they had there, which was incredible to see the power of breath. But obviously, why you do that is if you get bombed out on a big wave, you yeah, you could could feel like you're down there for a while. So it's very interesting. Why did you guys? Or why did the company? Sorry, you know, you've got all these ways to test it and do different pressures and stuff but why did you decide to go the drug free route because drugs seem to be the solution to everything in today's society yes funny you say that because we keep on doing studies and we keep on butting up against pharma big pharma who sort of runs the world now um no, you no, could say. Wild. and like we just finished a, an obesity study because there are now the, the new the new line of designer drugs for obesity have unbelievable side effects and it's just coming out that it actually it actually reduces your muscles you lose weight but it attacks your muscles so it's it's horrendous what's happening so yeah I am anti pharma um, you you understand that over a hundred years ago Bill Gates grandfather the Bill Gates who we think is such a special unique human. And who was a multi-billionaire before, you know, he dropped out of college, that whole thing that he was a college dropout. No, he's, he is the most elitist person on the planet. So Gates and Rockefeller created the pharma industry a hundred years ago. So we used to just cure ourselves, you know, the blue zones where people live over a hundred now, there were many more blue zones. uh, And there is a way to have a great long life. And, you know, if you can master the way you exchange your oxygen and your CO2, it affects everything. And at the base of all disease, I don't know if you know this, there, it, it is inefficiency of managing your oxygen is at the base of all chronic disease. It's part of it. So what we do really affects, it's almost like it's out of the gate. It's it, if you don't take care of this and, and manage your breath um, and build your breath, you're always at a disadvantage and people actually think they die. You know, they think you die of certain things, right? Um, when you get older, but 
you don't realize for about 30 or 40 years, you know, after your lungs actually start, your lung capacity starts shrinking after about age 29. And people don't know that, you know, James Nestor actually made that, he brought that fact up and he's helped really help the world take advantage of this. But the fact that our lungs, if we don't work on it, just like any muscle, if you don't work it, you're going to lose it. So it, it's critical to maintain that lung capacity and, you know, longevity. What are the things that track longevity? It's, it's lung capacity, HRV and VO2 max. Those three things, if you identify that you can predict almost how long a person's going to live. So if you can, if you can address lung capacity, which using our equipment, you actually can get that capacity back. It's huge. That's cool. That is awesome. That really, really excites me because I use the whoop. And once again, I want to find this balance between living my life and enjoying it, but I also learn, you know, look into a lot around how you can live longer and have a great quality of life as well with obviously there's no point living to a hundred if you can't walk properly or you can't breathe properly and enjoy your quality of life. So looking at tools and, and way to, ways to do that is pretty high up on my list. And yeah, up until I think when I did that sleep app, uh, uh, survival apnea program for breathing, I took my breathing seriously for about three months. And then obviously <laughs> when you're out of that immersive spirit experience, sorry, life gets in the way and you tend not to prioritize it. I still tape my mouth when I sleep, but I just know – I haven't worked on my lung capacity. I think, you know, going for a run is building it and look, it's building my aerobic capacity, but it's not improving my breathing because I'm not focused on it. I'm just trying to get through the run. And yeah, it's, well, and you I know, your it, body, your body has this amazing way to, for self um, preservation and people think that it's your limbs that go out, your heart gets, you, you get tired. No, your, your, your lungs cannot move the oxygen and, What's happening is your brain is telling you to put all the blood back to where it needs it and it's taking away from the limb. So you, you're you right. You think you're training other things, but if 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 your pump's not working, if, if the lung pump's not there and all the muscles that support it that actually create more efficient breathing, you do gas out and you do go to lactate threshold a lot quicker. So how does it, the, I guess, the benefit of training your lungs and your breathing, how will that then improve with the anxiety that you speak about and the sleeplessness, sorry, the sleeplessness. You, you know, at, at the, the, the simple answer is that just being aware of your breath, just if you start, you know, there's two things here. Just if you start being aware and you take slower, deeper breaths through the nose throughout the day, that yep. solves a lot of it. That addresses so much. So what we do is we target a lot deeper and we actually strengthen and build up all those muscles. But again, just the awareness to stop the shallow breathing. I always say this, check yourself when you're doing email or on social media. If you could track your, your, you know, your respiration rate, people are doing 20 breaths a minute, sometimes 25. Mm -hmm. And your body is going straight to a sympathetic state, thinking that you're in a fight, flight or freeze mode. And people aren't, they're not down regulating. They're not getting a chance to recover. You know, I wear the aura. You've got the whoop. Um, yeah, and I just have the aura. It cool tells me when to go into recovery, and it says to breathe, right? To 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 calm down and breathe. I feel for a lot of people as well. It could be the reason why they, for example, they're doing having a stressful day at work, and then they get home and snap at you know maybe their partner or their children, and they don't want to have that response. But obviously, when you're in that heightened state for such a long time, and then they go back to, oh, it's me, it's my emotions. And once again, your emotions are regulated by what state you're in and you can change your state through breath. You know, if people were to listen right now, if you were to actively breathe heavier, you're going to feel a lot more alert and on edge. But if you were to do, for example, box breathing where it's four seconds in, hold, four seconds exhale, hold, you start to calm down a lot. And it's yeah. small tips like that that are really uh, helpful for people but I just keep coming back to and I'm, I'm still blown away by the fact that I've never actually thought about training my breath properly it's like I do all these things but I don't yeah. train my lungs so I'm I'm genuinely pumped to be able to start doing that because once again it's it doesn't take long what's it like 10 minutes a day roughly 
It's a hack. Yeah, you do five minutes in the morning, five at night, six days a week when you're on a strength protocol, when you're building. So you yep. start out on a strength protocol, then you go to an endurance or sustaining protocol, and you don't have to do it as much. But you do have yep. to, once you get to sustaining, it's three times a week, so it's not as grueling. But it is, it isn't hard. You naturally calm down when you start doing it. And um, we've done a number of studies, sleep studies. We did a resilience study with frontline doctors at Mayo Clinic which was amazing. And their perceived stress went down 18%. These are guys that are in the operating room. And, and the big thing too, and all they did is they used the breather fit, the athletic one, because these were, these were healthy doctors. Um, and a lot of them are, are type A personalities, like a lot of the people that are, that, you know, watch your um, show. So the same type of people were these MDs and we had to give them other protocols. So we gave them instant calm protocols we gave them sleeping protocols and and to to switch so switch from the high intensity at work to home so you do not bring all that stress to your wife mm. or to your kids which is critical Huge. right Huge. and actually a quick one here's one this is like 2 seconds this works this affects your um heart rate instantly and, and calms you down it's just one breath in from the nose exhale it, but you got to make a noise um, because you got to hit that vagus nerve, that vibration. So you just go with your nose and you just do a sigh and you naturally do it. We all naturally do it. Watch, you'll do it at least a couple times today. Your body just tells you, Hey, you need a sigh. But if you do the instant calm. So if you're about to blow up with your wife or, or at work with a coworker or somebody, um, wherever in traffic this works instantly it's those simple things that once again sound too easy or too good to be true and i think that's the challenge i don't i actually i'd love to ask you the question is that a challenge you have with your with the breather because i guess it is so affordable when people either look at it as like you've got this perfect triangle where it could be time money and effort and obviously it's not taking well, it's not too expensive, so therefore they feel like the effort's got to be huge, and the you know time involved's got to be huge. Might be the the trade off for people. So the fact that you now have something that's extremely affordable, it can get it done in under ten minutes a day. Do you have people just then going, nah, nah, I won't put hey, too much effort on it? You just hit human nature, right? Just like how when you're training, when you don't want to train, it's the same thing. Is that <laughs> Um, and I, and I thought when I, when I took over, uh, running the company, I thought, oh my gosh, all 7 billion people should be using this. And then I tried to target the middle of the country, the middle of the world. And what we found, of course, somebody who's really compromised COPD, asthma, stroke, chronic heart failure, spinal cord injury, those people have to use it because it could be the only training and they need it. They can't even walk to go to uh, get their mail or pick up their grandchild. So they, they need it. And then the other side of the spectrum are the Olympians we work with, special forces and, and, and professional athletes. Well, guess what? They have to do it because they need to make money. So the rest of us, the other 98% or well, no, there's, you know, the, the, the people in the, I'd say the healthy category which is probably 60% of humans could be categorized in that way. Maybe 50, maybe it's less. Yeah. Um, go they don't, if there's not a need, they're not going to do it. So um, yeah. we have drop off too, just like in when you're lifting weights, people, people drop off. Yep. Yeah. That's where I think for people listening, if you are wanting to have a long, enjoyable life, it's about thinking about what can I do to, to maintain that. And once again, in the moment, using this the breather for example once a day or brushing your teeth once a day isn't going to do anything today or maybe even tomorrow but over a 10 year period it's going to have you in a much better position than most people and what i then think about is okay for example if this takes me 5 minutes in the morning and 5 minutes in the evening what habits can i stack together so that i get it done for example most you know people talk about morning routines having that routine that sets you up to win the day and there's the evening rituals for those who do those. Once again, it winds you down and maybe preps you for the next day. It's no different. I personally would use this as a warm up to my training session and you know a way to sort of unwind before I go to bed because I understand the impacts and the effects of it. And it doesn't become challenging because I've now just stacked the habit. 
It's like part that of is, stretching to train. Yeah, you just hit it. When you stack the habit, you win. Um, you know, I've got on the athletic side, I've got um, two two competitive athletes. Uh, two of my three sons. The third one's not old enough yet, but the two are pre-Olympic surfers, and this is their little secret edge that they have over the other kids. Uh, you know, they're eleven and thirteen, uh, but they're doing really, you know, they're doing really well, and they use the breather fit. Um, once a day. I mean, they're little kids and that's enough yeah. for them. And it gives them that little edge. They can paddle a little bit longer than the other kids and they just have a little more stamina. And guess what? You know, at the competitive level, it's 1%. The person who just has a tiny edge is who wins. So it gives my boys a little competitive edge. Oh, dude, I get so excited for that. Like just the compound effect of that as well. For example, getting that extra paddle effort and getting an extra wave in over you know what they're 13 and 11 by the time they're 20 they're going to have those however many extra waves in because they could aerobically keep up with that it's like compounding interest with money oh my or gosh you just hit it they're deposits. probably going to get an extra 5000 waves before they're 20 Correct. yeah and like what you learn from that that's what excites me i wish i had it when i was back running <laughs> could it yeah. could have been extremely yeah. beneficial but that's that's what really excites me but I'd love to talk now more about uh, yourself as an individual. Obviously, I've heard you speak about uh, thinking 10, 10x, like just big way of thinking. And also you said you've got kids. How do you manage work-life balance when you do have this mindset where you're extremely passionate about your career and you've obviously got big goals and ambitions with that? So how do you manage to, I guess, make that work? Because that's a big challenge that a lot of men face. Yeah. And, and we can't complain, right? I mean, we, we can't, we just have to suck it up and we have to be, we have to be there for our wives. We do. It's just life. Nothing wrong with it. We, we are the men and we have to step up. So I would say that it's extremely difficult. So, so what I do, and, and um, if my wife was sitting here next to me, you know, she'd say I've been challenged the past year or so, but um, that balances. I try to, as soon as I wake up, um, it's either a workout or it's time with the boys and we do something, we go swim or we do something early. So if I can, if I can check in my morning routine, maybe a little different than all the people in Tim Ferriss's book. I mean, it's awesome. Tim <laughs> Ferriss's books, but yeah. mine is family first in the morning Oh, first prayer. So I'll do a prayer. I'll do a little devotional and then, um, I will spend time with family, then go to work. And that helps because then I'm gone. You know, I'm, 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 I don't want to say checked out, but I'm, I'm pretty busy until nighttime. And then we try to check in back um, at night. So, and here's the other thing. You just can't take on too many things. I own, um, I own other companies too. Uh, so it is, it is a challenge and you have to, it, and I think, you know, I've, I've listened to some of your um, shows and it's it's about your team too. I have the most amazing employees and without that I could not put in that extra time. So if you don't have all the employees and and it's just you, um if you don't make time, somebody else will make time for you. So if I do not put in my calendar, it's not going to happen. I fail a lot, you know? I I I get grouchy, I get upset, I take work home and sometimes I forget to use those protocols that I've learned on how to calm down and how to downregulate. <laughs> But I'm human too, just like everybody else. And there are times when I won't use my breather for three months. I'll just be like, oh, dude, I'm sick of it. I've been using it for seven years. <laughs> yeah. It's like this is getting old. So what we're doing is we keep reinventing. So we've got an awesome connected device that's coming out next year. As soon as you put it in your mouth, it'll predict an exacerbation 14 days before you even know it. So, um, wow. yeah. That's very, very exciting. So I think I loved what you said there. Obviously, the way you start your day is with with prayer or for those who don't start their day that way, you could look at like a gratitude practice or something where you're focusing on like, I guess, that being thankful for something bigger than yourself, that compelling future. That's what, you know, I, I really prioritize. And then that time for family. I think it's very easy to get drawn to what we want to achieve and where we're going that we don't appreciate what we have right now. And I've read too many or watched too many stories where people on their deathbed, and I interviewed a guy last week. Actually, I should connect him with you. He's a he's an avid surfer, but he's got stage four lung cancer, Ooh. and he's documenting his uh, his journey. And in his phrases, it's either 
the beginning of the end or the start of something beautiful. And wow. um, he was putting into perspective like what his routine. So he spends two and a half hours now getting himself right for the day. Now he doesn't do that all at once. He does about an hour in the morning, 30 minutes at lunch, an hour at night, just so he can mentally um, prepare for the day. And I think a lot of people neglect that because he now understands how important every minute is. Yeah. Many of us, um, I guess, think about it, but we are already thinking about what's coming next. And so I love that you prioritize your family and you, you mentioned your health there as well. I think health for me is non-negotiable and it's not always smashing myself in the gym. It could be stretching or, or this breathing, whatever it may be, but it's going to physically make me better. Then we go hustle. We do the work stuff. You can't get away without working. You have to provide for your family. You have to, I believe, have purpose, something that you're working towards. And then you come and do the same when you get back home. Many people do not, sorry to cut you off, Mike, to, do not schedule their time outside of work. And as mm -hmm. you said, if you don't do that, someone will do it for you and you'll look back on, man, I wasted a lot of time. Yeah. You know what's uh, interesting what you said um, about about that, um, about the prioritizing. So um, when I – Gosh, there was something you said about nighttime and um, the ritual it, habits. Prepping to, to, to get – or obviously recap your day or get set for the day ahead. Oh, yeah. That's what it is, is that, you know, people – and I hope I can help a lot of people right now because so many people have sleeping issues. A lot of people have oh, yeah. that. Yeah. And so did you know that you sleep poorly because you breathe poorly during the day? People don't realize it. So people need – People need a reason. You need a why. So when you're when you're very sick, I've got your why. That's easy. I can a COPD patient has to see me. So, but when it's the rest of us, um, if you uh, pay attention to your why, so it adds up those fifteen or so thousand breaths you take before you start going to sleep, or ten thousand before nighttime. That is creating a pattern for how you're going to breathe when you go to sleep. And yes, you do the mouth tape. That's huge, huge benefit. But it's it's strange how um how how you are during the day throughout the day affects your sleep. Definitely. So you're almost like the way to get a good sleep is how you start the the following morning or that morning of that day essentially. Yeah. Preparation is key. And once again, we a lot of as you said, you might go three months without using the breather, for example. And many of us do with a lot of those simple habits. But what we do daily does determine the results that we're getting. And uh, I'm the first to put my hand up and say, I once again, I get to speak to a lot of amazing people like yourself and I learn so many cool things that I'm like, okay, I want to implement that. And then life gets busy and I, I lose focus on what's really important to me because once again, like yourself, Mark, I have things that I want to achieve, which excite me. And sometimes I can forget about what I've got right in front of me to really maximize who I am as an individual, as a, as a husband and as a mate and as a business owner. So it's, I guess, catching yourself before, you know, you let too much time pass. Yeah. How important to you on that then is the people that you surround yourself with? Obviously, you're in the, the health field. You Do you surf as well? I'd imagine you surf as well. Well, my wife and I are learning, and I got to tell you, man, that is a lifelong sport you, because it activates every single muscle. You're taking in that amazing salt air and, and the water. So I, and you see uh, so many successful people, if they're coastal, they all surf. It's, it's strange. All these people I meet who are on East on the coasts and for you, when you used to live in Australia, I'm sure same thing, which we have not been yet. I cannot wait until we start surfing Australia. It's going to be amazing. Dude, you're going to um, love it. Yeah. You're going to have to hook us up and tell me who to stay with while we're there. Oh yeah. We got some good buddies there and one of, um, my mate has a nice beach house where he's got this ice bar sauna and literally walk straight onto the beach to some of the best surf mm. in, in Oz. So it's definitely fun. But I guess to even second that, I love the fact that when you're surfing, obviously there's the physical challenges of learning how to read waves and the endorphin rush of all of that. But just when you're out the back of a set, you realize how simple life really could be. Looking back at the, you know, whether it's a skyline or the the city that depending on where you're surfing and you're just like i'm really quite insignificant in the big picture all my problems don't really matter too much and for yeah. me it's the most therapeutic experience and then you go back in and you're like man, 
I went into the water freaking out about a deadline and now I don't even care about that deadline. Yeah. So there's, I can definitely see why a lot of, you know, CEOs and high performing people who have access to surfing do do that. Yeah. It's, it's so fun. It is. Can you explain the, the 10 X thinking? Yeah. Um, it, it's, you know, uh, some people talk about hundred X thinking, um, as well, but for me, and I do. I did this with my boys. It was an India, an Indian billionaire. I heard him about maybe I don't know eight or ten years ago. How he preps his kids. So when as his kids were growing up, he would always say to them, "Hey, I want you to always think how you can help a billion people. Always think a billion. So if you can help a billion, money's going to be no issue. You're going to be you're going to be as rich as me and more. So if to me, it's that is, can I help a million people, 10 million, a hundred. So I always tell my boys, you know, what do you wh- come up with an idea of how you can help a billion people today? And just, you know, it, your brain is a muscle too, right? It's got a muscle. It, it, you can build habits into it. So when you think like that, when you're always thinking out of the box like that, good ideas start happening. They just happen. Yeah. I, I love that. And I, I, don't necessarily use 10 X, but I always try to think bigger. It's like when you settle with something, it's like, how could you multiply that? And what would the actions be that you would need to take in order to achieve that? And then if you do start to act on it, you really start to move what you think is possible. And I think it's very easy after school or tertiary education to stop learning, but we need yeah. to adopt lifelong learning to, to master in the three areas that I, I believe in is health, your relationships and wealth. You must always be learning. You must always be being challenged by people, their thoughts, their ideas, and the things that they've got going on, and then put it to the test. I I think it's really important to test it for yourself, not always take on opinions. It's like, let's form my own opinion. Yeah, I I love constantly learning. And, you know, just just so I don't sound like I'm just full of good news, um, (laughs) something like, dude, I just want to give up. There are days, I have dark days, you know, when you're, Because as we've been growing, we've had a lot of growth since COVID because we are part of the solution. I help build, I help strengthen people's respiratory system. So when we started really uh, having a hockey puck, you know, hockey stick growth after COVID hit, we started getting a lot of counterfeits from China and knockoffs. So I had to do a lot of lawsuits and and try Mm -hmm. to fight all these, all these bad actors on Amazon and everywhere. And you have, you have some dark days and also even getting bad investors. You know, once I raised um, six years ago, I think it was, I raised almost a million um, from an investor and um, he was just not the right guy. He didn't know anything about medicine or medical and um, it was, it was such a bad fit. So, um, you know, there are the dark and the good. So I suffer just like everybody else. I have really dark days and really good days. What did you learn from raising the funds and recognizing that it wasn't it wasn't the right fit because I think that can help people building out their environment with the people that they surround themselves with. Because quite often we, you know, we might have a person who has one amazing thing about themselves, for example, but then they have 10 toxic things or 10 things that just add more value, but they're like, no, I need to keep this person in my life because they're the best person to drink beers with or whatever it may be. So what did you learn from that in um, investment experience? In rate and how, what I went through raising money. Yeah, or just just what you learned when you realized he wasn't the right person, even though he had the capital. But yeah. what were those things that you recognized that he was not the best fit for the company? Well, um, you know what it is is because he didn't know our industry, and uh, and it and again, it's tough because you when you're trying to grow and or you're doing a startup or you're trying to really expand, like we've done a couple times, you're in a spot where you probably have to raise money. And um, I hate to say that I don't hate say, but saying no, it's easy to say it right now because I'm I'm cash positive. So I can say, no, I don't, I'm I'm not going to talk to that guy. But you know, at that time I really wanted to grow and I think it was a bad decision. Um, I thought I knew him and his family well, but I did not as well as I thought. And the bottom line is, Here's the thing, you know, you hire for character and you train for skill, right? Well, mm. 
I'm going to talk about this with an investor. Character means everything because they can crush you in a second. They can, they can, if they're willing to give you a couple million bucks, they can, they have a lot more millions to go. So um, you have to interview them as much as they interview you. And please know this, they all can read through the lies. They just sometimes need to push their money somewhere. And you might be that lucky bloke who, who actually they're like, Oh, this guy seems okay. I'll give him, I'll give him money. But they can read through the lies in seconds and and know that. Don't ever try to trick them and don't ever say next year we're going to do 600% growth. It happens, but those are the companies that are on the news and there are only like 50 companies a year that do that, that grow at that exponential rate. Um, so be realistic, be honest, and, and, and find people who may invest in you um, who also have some character. Unless you're super mm. desperate. I'm going to be real yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. The company's about to crash. Um, act like you're at Vegas. Take your chances. <laughs> you're going to try to back out of it a year later or two. I don't know. Yeah. I appreciate the context. It's good to know because I think one thing I always wanted, especially when I started in business and probably earlier, was to have role models who were honest of what it took to whether it was having a successful relationship building a company because we all hear the success stories but we don't know what it took to really get there and people don't like to share their shit it's like the fact that if you are about to go bankrupt just take the cash because that's what you need to survive and if you genuinely believe that in your product or service then do what you need to do to to win like that's that's it and sometimes those decisions looking back like shouldn't have done that but when your back's against the wall, you do it. Yeah. As long yeah, as it's always ethical for everyone listening. <laughs> but Mark, I want to respect your time and I really appreciate you uh, giving me some of your time. It's been honestly great to chat with you and I am honestly excited to to test out this product because I'm an asthmatic. I train mm-hmm. every single day. I have breathing issues and I've obviously also been diving into how I can improve my energy, improve my sleep with the power of breath and just training my lungs because once again, I do marathons, I do all kinds of stuff and I just know the more efficient I am with my breath, the better everything else will come. So thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. And where can people buy the product and where can people find you as well? You could either search pnmedical.com or just search for The Breather. Just search The Breather and, and it should pop up all over the internet. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. And for those listening along, if you got value from this, share it with someone that you know will also get some value. And all the links to Mark and the breather will be in the show notes below. Thank you for listening to the Man That Can Project podcast. My name is Lockie Stewart, and I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful. If you did, please take a moment to rate and review the Man That Can Project on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with our newest episodes. We'll see you again next time.